now. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to this year's final Nostalgic Christmas video for 2017. Today, the day of this video being published, is Christmas Day, and every year when I can, I try and do something a little special for this day. Now, for this year's Christmas Day video, we're going to do a rundown of every vintage computer I currently own. Off the top of my head, I don't have a number, so I guess we'll have to find that out together as we go. So, um, let's get started. Okay, to start things off, let's um, check out the um, greatest um, computer acquisition of um, this year for myself. Um, the Packard Bell Multimedia D132, the infamous Packard Bell Corner Desktop. Um, I've done um, several videos about this computer um, this year since I got it, and I did a bunch for Nostalgic Christmas this year, but um, let's just take one final look at it this year. Um, I did a good overview video about this computer last week, um, so we'll go ahead and just power it on. Um, as you saw last week, I set up a separate CF card for um, Windows 3.1. But um, today we're just going to be booting into Windows 95. This is a very rare computer, folks. I know I've said this before. booted to the desktop here. I'm probably not going to show too much of this computer since um, we saw it so much last week. So you probably already know all there is to know about this computer, but just for the sake of the video, um, we got to show it. This is a vintage computer after all, and I do own it. Again, I want to thank my friend um, for sending this my way last summer. Very, very grateful to have it. Again, um, has a 166 megahertz Pentium 1, um, about 48 megabytes of RAM. I don't know what it originally came with. Has originally came with a 1.2 gig hard drive, but it now has a um, CF card in it, which is two gigabytes. And um, it's running both Windows 95 on one card and Windows 3.1 on the other card. And it was manufactured November the 13th of 1996. So, um, again, we saw um, this computer last week, so um, there's not much more to see about it. Go ahead and shut it back down. And we'll move on to the next computer. And this is number one. All right, here's the second one for the video. Um, this is the Apple iBook G3, um, which was donated to me by um, the Flying Scotsman back in November. A very, very generous donation. And again, I did an overview on this a couple of weeks ago, but we'll um, briefly um, touch up on it again. It has a 600 or so megahertz um, G3 processor 128 megabytes of RAM and a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and it's running Mac OS 9.2.2. Um, the reason I wanted something like this, and of course I've um, touched on this before, is because, you know, I, I'm really not much of a Macintosh person, um, especially the vintage stuff, and I've... Um, I mean, I used them in school, back in elementary school. We had a bunch of Power Macs there, including a, a few Apple IIe's, of all things. But at home, I used a PC. So I didn't really um, have much influence from these old Macs. So um, I just don't have much of a nostalgia for them, so I don't feel the need to really collect these. But occasionally, I do want to um, use them just to 
to tinker with the other side of the world and to um, play some of the old um, stuff that I used at school and whatnot. And because of that, I really don't want a giant Apple desktop taking up space in here for um, something that I'll hardly ever use. So having a, um, a laptop that I could just um, move out of the way when I'm not using it would make a lot of sense, hence why I got this. And also, um, I wanted um, a more modern um, vintage Macintosh that could um, still run old versions of Mac OS, like Mac OS 9, but um, still have um, more uh, modern features like a DVD drive and USB ports for transferring data to and from it. So, um, having something like this is absolutely perfect. So, um, let's go ahead and power it on. You know it's a Macintosh when it makes that noise. Starting up. Kind of a slow hard drive, but um, it's not like I'm using this computer all the time. And plus, um, from what I understand, replacing the hard drive in one of these iBook G3s is um, extremely difficult. Loading the extensions, and that background was actually set by um, Jay before he sent it out to me. And um, the clock battery in it does not work, so it's going to think it's um, the early 20th century of all times. <laughs> and we are booted in, and one moment I need to take care of something. Alright, um, I'm back, so um, I guess we'll zoom in on the screen here. There we go, that'll do it. Again, um, I am very, very much a novice when it comes to um, Mac OS, all versions, unfortunately. If you're wondering what happened to that 2007 MacBook, by the way, I keep getting asked about this. Um, I wound up having to sell it last year. Long story, but um, there we go. Mac OS 9.2.2. Uh, some kind of networking thing I had installed. And um, I have taken this on the internet. Um, Jay installed Classzilla on here, which is a version of Mozilla Firefox designed to work on older versions of Mac OS. But um, I currently don't have any available Ethernet cables at the moment to um, demonstrate that with you. So sorry about that. So. Um, I will show one game on here, I suppose. And I did show this um, the other week when I did the video about this computer, but it won't hurt to play it again. And I gotta adjust the monitor. A little bit of Board Munchers, a game I used to play on the Max at um, elementary school. Also played um, Number Munchers as well. Okay. As in red. Oh. 
auch. Das ist eine Art Noise. <lacht> oh, I misread that. I don't know my elementary school vowels, which is embarrassing because um, writing is one of my hobbies. Huh. We actually um, did it that time. We'll go ahead and quit that. Got a high score. What do you know? Oop, I sorry about that. I hit the camera. Alright, we'll um, eject this disk image. Uh, switch it back to millions of colors. And we'll shut it down for now. And I will do more um, videos about this computer um, once I learn more about it and do more with it. Because again, I'm still a novice when it comes to um, this Macintosh stuff. Apparently it didn't shut down. Um, okay, and apparently it's slow to shut down. But there we are. iBook G3. And that's computer number two. Alright, on to the next computer. And um, this is one of my pride and joys. Um, this is the Gateway 2000 P5133XL. This is a computer I purchased for $15 at the late Great Value Village um, for um, all the way back in February of 2011. And I used it for about a month or two until I grew tired of it. And then I just stuck it up in that attic there where it sat for um, six years until this past spring when I got in the mood for gateways and decided to bring it back down. Um, it was missing quite a few parts, but I was able to um, um, put some parts in there to get it going again. And um, I've made several videos about this computer this past year. And um, it's hard to believe it's set up in that attic for six years and the thing still works perfectly. <laughs> That's because um, Gateway 2000s are just incredible machines. Um, no relation to the Sierra computer game from the 90s, but... <laughs> this um, computer is special to me because, um, you know, I've told this story many times, but the first computer I ever used was a Gateway 2000. Um, it was my aunt's Gateway 2000 that she bought new in May of 1995. And it was a um, Gateway 2000 P5100XL. And um, it was not only the first computer I ever used, but it was the first computer I ever saw. So the idea of a computer for me at the time was a Gateway 2000. And um, she still has the computer um, after all these years. It's um, 22 years old and it still works perfectly. Of course, I, although I have to admit I haven't seen it in quite a few years, though. But um, as far as I know, it still works perfectly. And I know my aunt um, watches these videos, so she's probably watching this one as well. So um, I'll go ahead and give her a shout-out and tell her thank you for um, introducing me to the world of computers back in 1995. Um, if it wasn't for you, none of this mess would have been possible. <laughs> So, anyway, um, as far as this computer is concerned, um, it has a 133 MHz Pentium processor. Um, originally came with 16 megs of RAM. I upgraded it to 32 megs. A um, 
It originally had a 1.2 gig hard drive, but it currently has a 15 gig hard drive. And it originally came with Windows 95, and it's currently dual booted with both MS-DOS slash um, Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. Now what makes this computer um, unique is that this was not only the Gateway 2000 P5133XL, but it was also Gateway 2000's 10th anniversary machine. And I've got a um, magazine ad up here on above it advertising it back in 1995. Um, Gateway 2000 was founded in 1985 and for their 10th anniversary in 1995 they um, released this computer right here and this was the ad for it. Would love to find those tall speakers there that came with this originally but I don't have those obviously. But um, it was it's very, very cool to have um, a piece of Gateway 2000 history right here. And um, another thing, um, you may recall last time you saw this, this was missing quite a few um, blanking plates. Well, um, you may re also recall um, back in August I purchased a Gateway 2000 4DX33 from uh, 1994 at Value Village for a couple of dollars, but unfortunately um, it was non-functioning and I was unable to repair it. But I was able to salvage um, its one blanking plate, and by the way there's the faceplate for the computer up here, and um, its blanking plate is right here in the middle, but I still needed two more to fill in these gaps right here, so I had to put in a um, badly yellowed um, CDRW drive right here to just fill that gap and I had to take this floppy drive out and move it up here in a um, adapter to fill in that gap. But thankfully, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was contacted by um, YouTube user um, Cole Tech, who um, was also the one that sent me the power adapter for that um, iBook. And he came across a dead Gateway 2000 that had um, two um, blanking plates on there. And he offered to send them my way, and he did, and I got them the other day. And I was able to um, fill in the rest of these gaps right here, and uh, the, the system looks authentic now. <laughs> and he also was gracious enough to send me a little surprise, this old uh, Microsoft TechNet um, CD binder. Comes in handy. Now, as much as I love this um, Gateway 2000, um, what I'm after is a Gateway 2000 that looks exactly like my aunt's. Um, this computer is great and all, but um, I want to have a computer that looks just like the one I used for the first time. And um, they pop up from time to time on eBay. And um, unfortunately, I've never really uh, been able to get one. And it doesn't have to be a P5100XL. Um, it, it just needs to have that same case style and be preferably a Pentium. But maybe someday I'll um, own one. But until then, this is a um, nice consolation. And um, besides, it's still a great little computer. Although I shouldn't say little, it is a tall, tall computer. So, um, let's go ahead and power it on. All right, we're booted into Acronis OS Selector um, because this is dual booted with um, th Win 3.11 and Win 95. Um, first of all, we'll um, boot into Windows 3.1. Pull up a chair here. Right, first, it's booting into MS-DOS 6.22. 
probably the definitive version of um, DOS, if you ask me. All right. Windows for Work Groups version 3.11. I really do like this computer. <laughs> Such a nice, solid machine. It's taken a while to log into the network there. Custom Gateway 2000 background I got. the Windows 3.1 program manager and I better adjust the camera here <laughs> all right that's better um, so um, what should we do first here going a little bit more in-depth of this one since I haven't done a video about it in a while so um, here's my games I got solitaire course minesweeper hearts Microsoft Entertainment Pack, Humongous Entertainment stuff, Sierra stuff, um, the Gus games, Living Books, Maxis, and Kid Picks. And for um, Living Books, um, I want to show something because um, there was a game that we played on my Ant's Gateway 2000 that I actually have. Once I find it. And it's um, just Grandma and Me. I've shown this a few times on the channel. And we'll go ahead and open it up. See, I played this before we even had our Packard Bell back in 95. Nice if my chair didn't hit the tripod. see a little bit better now. Hi, I'm Little Freighter. Welcome to Living Books. To have the story read to you, press this button. To play inside the story, press this button. Subwoofer cable was loose. <laughs> okay. I bet no kid ever um, pressed the read to me button. <laughs> I know I didn't. to the beach. Just grandma and me. And my dad actually bought my own copy of this game for me back in um, December of 1995. Um, I believe just the day after we got our um, Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. So this was one of the first computer games I ever owned. And as is tradition, Alright, you want me to ruin your childhood for you? Grandma right there is voiced by a man. <laughs> That's right. Um, not only um, did a man voice um, Grandma, but um, his son voiced Little Critter. Are you excited? Yeah, Grandma, I am. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> kind of bizarre, but hey, it worked. If you want to play inside a certain page, click on the arrow. Okay. I want to move to page four because there's some good stuff on here. <laughs> iPod Hot 
house dogs were brown on me. But they fell in the sand. So I washed them off. Uh, so you got a hot dog covered in sand mm -hmm. and salty ocean water. You know, people probably peed in that water. <laughs> and it's very crunchy. And you know what's scary? That's probably not the sand that's crunchy. And you want to see someone have a um, spazzy panic attack? say that but all right let's that's enough of um just grandma and me do you want to quit yes okay. all right we'll drop back down to dos actually And play a quick DOS game. Once I figure out what we got. How about this for a change? skip through that but yeah this is the secret of monkey island very classic point and click adventure game from lucas arts back in i think 1990 great ad-lib music there sound card that's in the system by the way is a creative sound blaster 16 vibra i know i get criticized a lot for using a vibra cards but you know what they sound perfect to me so I actually beat this entire game back in the summer of 2013 on my um, current Packard Bell Legend 822. And obviously I had to use a walkthrough online, but hey, I got through it. <laughs> and of course, this is one of those games that doesn't take itself seriously, which um, is what I like about it. And we'll open the door. Because that's always a good thing to do with doors, is open them. And the scum bar. I think the reason it's called scum is because um, the um, game engine this is based on is the scum engine. And so yes, that means you can play this quite easily in scum VM. Let's walk to the doll. Let's talk to the dog. <laughs> yeah, that was a um, plug for another game of theirs. <laughs> Hmm. 
<laughs> I miss games were I miss when games were funny and fun and simple like this. So yeah, um, Secret of Monkey Island, we're obviously not going to play through the whole game because it takes forever. But um, highly, highly, highly recommend it. And we'll um, reboot and boot into um, Windows 95. Got to mention this computer was manufactured on um, November the 24th of 1995, making it um, just over 22 years old. Can't believe I um, let this computer waste six valuable years up in the attic. <laughs> into my domain and um, I keep getting emails asking um, how to set up one of these virtual Windows 2000 domains um, to be quite honest with you I do not know <laughs> um, uh, the Flying Scotsman actually set that up for me um, a while back so um, ask him <laughs> Obviously, the volume is a lot louder in Windows 95 than it was in 3.1. So, yeah, pretty standard Windows 95 install here. Even put some OEM info there. Got an S3 Verge video card, 4 megabyte card actually. That's a good card, um, to be fair. NEC multi sync monitor. 3Com um, Ethernet card, um, an ISA card. Very, very compatible, by the way. And I highly recommend it. And the Sound Blaster 16. And yes, it's a Vibra. Shoot me. Oh, and also forgot to mention I've um, I've got the Gateway 2000 edition of Microsoft Bob on here. And um, it was actually the subject of um, last year's Christmas Day video. Um, I did a little mini documentary on it. And I got a plethora of um, software on here. And we'll play one quick game. Um, how about uh, Monster Truck Madness? Get my joystick way over here. has been a favorite of mine since 1996.
one lap by the way. And there we go. So yeah, um, that's the uh, Gateway 2000 P5133XL. Um, wonderful, wonderful computer. Highly recommend it. I think there's actually one for sale on eBay right now. Um, I don't know how much it is, but it's there if you want to have one of these for, of your very own. So yeah, cool stuff. All right, on to computer number four. This is um, a computer of my own creation, actually. Um, this is what I like to call the Carolina Flyer um, Windows 98 custom build. Um, as you can tell by the tag here, I built this on August 29th of this year. Um, it originally had a um, A open um, slot one motherboard with a um, 266 megahertz Pentium 2, but Unfortunately, it was not able to go beyond um, that CPU speed. Um, it was, uh, I believe, a very early slot one board, so um, I upgraded it to a uh, newer slot one board that can take a Pentium 3 processor, and I did put a Pentium 3 processor in it, which um, I did in a video for Nostalgia Christmas this year, so um, if you want to see that, um, check that out. And I did eventually get that Pentium 3 um, sticker looks pretty good. Um, why did I build this computer? Um, well, I wanted a system, a vintage um, based system, that could run um, just about any vintage computer game I threw at it. And um, thankfully it succeeds in that. Um, it's got a, um, it's currently got a 600 megahertz um, Intel Pentium 3 processor, a Intel motherboard, I forget the model number at the moment. Um, it's got 256 megabytes of RAM, a 40 gigabyte hard drive along with a second um, 15 gigabyte hard drive where I store games on, a um, DVD-ROM floppy drive, um, and it's got um, Windows 98 on it. Sound card is a um, Creative Sound Blaster All 64, and the video card is a um, 16 meg um, NVIDIA card and um, with that and that's the perfect combination of hardware to run um, just about any game uh, made from the early 90s to the early 2000s. Um, it can play DOS games, it can play games designed for Windows 3.1, it can play games designed for Windows 95, and it can play most games designed for Windows 98. So this is pretty much a good all-purpose, all-around um, vintage computer to run anything on, and um, yeah, I am very proud of this system. So, um, let's go ahead and power it on. Oh my gosh. The heck? Was the speakers making that noise. Scared the crap out of me. I don't know um, why it was doing that. But we're booting into Windows 98. Might be a loose speaker to connection somewhere on the sound card. And yes, I do have a custom Carolina Flyer um, wallpaper. So um, before I log in, I want to see what that speaker sound was all about. Okay, all I had to do was just um, turn the computer off and turn it back on. Um, I don't know what was causing it. Sound, I think it was coming from the sound card itself, um, which is not a good sign because I really like the sound card. But anyway, we'll go ahead and log in. Yes, that's the um, Windows NT4 logon sound. I just like having it on Windows 98 for some reason. <laughs> Booting into the desktop. Um, this is the same install I've had since August. Going 
into um, system properties here. Give it some custom OEM info. Okay, NVIDIA Vanta video card. Probably not the best video card, but hey, it works. Uh, same monitors before, and yes, this is KVM to the gateway. Uh, 3Com um, Fast Etherlink XL um, PCI network card, and the Creative All 64. And um, we'll go to the server here, do a quick CPU-Z. Yes, there is a version that runs on Windows 98. Okay, Intel Pentium 3E Copper Mine, clocked at 600 megahertz. Motherboard is a Intel SE440BX-2. Memory, 256 megabytes, um, more than enough for what I need. And the NVIDIA card. Now, um, one of my favorite parts of this computer is the um, Creative um, Sound Blaster All 64 because it has, uh, as much as I like um, FM synthesis, this this sound card has really, really good um, wavetable synthesis, which is kind of what it's famous for. So I'll go ahead and give you um, an example. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the um, intro song you hear at the beginning of um, every um, Nostalgia Christmas video this year, um, um, oh Come All Ye Faithful um, was actually recorded off this computer's um, All-64 card. So we'll go to Christmas Carols here. And find a good one. That's not what I wanted, actually, but... Ah, oh, here it is. So yeah, sounds really, really, really good. Okay, so um, let's play a game, shall we? Um, since this has a little bit more power, um, let's play a Windows 98 era game. It's actually a favorite of mine. Um, Midtown Madness 2. Uh, sometimes the DVD drive um, likes to stick closed. Game pad. I'm using this uh, Microsoft game pad. You can't see it in the dark, but kind of an awkward angle here. And if you're running, if you're wondering if this can play DOS games, it plays them perfectly. Like I said, it plays um, everything from the early 2000s, well, from the early 90s to the early 2000s, just fine. For the most part. And we'll drive through um, San Francisco. Um. I think my video card might not be um, happy with something. <laughs> that's, 
That looks like a Ford Mustang that's been through um, one of those um, cube makers at um, car wrecker places. Not sure if that's going to fix it or not. And it didn't. Well, I think I need a new video card, folks. <laughs> Uh, that'll be on the to-do list for 2018. There's no better way Jeez, to Louise. cruise through San Francisco. Uh. I know people in San Francisco um, take certain types of um, drugs, but I thought that stuff was in the 60s. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Raise your hand if you think I need to upgrade my video card. <laughs> I think of what I will do though is until I get a better car, I do have a um, ATI Rage 128 that I used to have in this computer and it played this just fine. So yeah, um, I think I will probably throw that in there at some point in the near future. Oh man. I you can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Can we play something else? Um, I wonder. Something that doesn't... Well... How about this? Nice little consolation. After all, it is Christmas. Um, I've played a few of the um, Christmas games over the years, including um, Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 94 and 95. But did you know they made a um, Holiday Hair um, for Jazz Jack Rabbit 2? This is Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 1998. And if you ask me, it's probably not as good as the. DOS versions from 94 and 95, but still, but still enjoyable as well. Yeah, this looks a lot easier on the eyes. <laughs> Seasons greetings from Epic Mega Games, Orange Games, and Gathering Developers. This is also, in my opinion, a little bit harder than the original game. Ugh. Looks like this game's off to a roaring stop. Oh, whoa, 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> We're about to die, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we are very, very low on health. So, this looks like a job for cheating. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and admit I've not played this game all that often, so I'm a little bit of a noob. Okay, why can't I get up there? I can't get down there either. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the um, original Holiday Hair games for DOS were probably a lot better. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. And I'm not Paul Schindler. See, this came out for Christmas in 1998. I remember that Christmas very well. We had an ice storm on Christmas Eve. Most of Greensboro lost power, except for us, although it kept going out in surges all day, teasing us. Am I missing something here? Okay, helicopter ears do not work. Oh, there we go, there we go. There we go. Um, we're back down here again, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, you know what? I give up. <laughs> this is too difficult, and we need to move along with this video, because there's more computers we've got to look at. So we'll go ahead and shut down the Carolina Flyer for now. So yeah, very good little system here that can play just about everything, um, except for Midtown Madness 2, but that's because um, we have a dopey little video card. And this was computer number four, and off to computer number five. And the joys of Windows 98, folks. The joys of Windows 98. All right, um, on to the next computer. Um, we have another Compaq Armada E500. Um, this is the third one I've owned. This one was um, donated to me by um, um, the Flying Scotsman um, along with the iBook G3 back in November. And um, these are very good Windows 98 laptops. Um, Jay can certainly to attest to that. This is 
this one of his favorite computers of all time and he's an expert when it comes to compacts um, especially the um, Armada E500 and um, this computer needs some work unfortunately um, the keyboard um, is very very worn out so it needs a new keyboard um, there are some splotches in the screen so it needs a, a new screen Network card does not work, so it needs a new network card. Thankfully, that's on a little daughter board that can be easily replaced. And as I discovered um, earlier today, the um, floppy drive does not work either. But everything else works, so um, I haven't done much with it yet. Um, I'm probably going to use this for one of two things. One, as a... Um, kick around um, Windows 98 laptop to have out here in the office or to a um, my main Windows 98 computer for the bedroom um, for the desk that is so um, let's go ahead and turn it on no battery so um, let's, once I plug it in it'll uh, power on immediately has a um, 600 megahertz um, Intel Celeron from the Pentium 3 era um, like almost 200 some megabytes of memory and a 6 gigabyte hard drive I think it is and I do need to upgrade that hard drive at some point And this Windows 98 install was um, made by Jay himself, so it's full of um, memes and jokes. <laughs> Got an 8 gigabyte CF card um, in the PCMCIA slot for um, storing games on it. A little slow booting up. Uh, that's probably because of the slow hard drive. Okay, um, it's not connected to the network at the moment. <laughs> That's a sound effect from a um, Victor Bart video where a com computer um, had a, a capacitor blow up when it turned on. And if you saw the um, video where I initially tested this computer um, back in November, You'll remember that that sound scared the crap out of me because these speakers are really, really good. That's a custom um, wallpaper Jay made for me. Very nice of him. Again, I'm not going to show much on this computer mainly because I haven't done much of it yet. I don't know if you can see them, but there are splotches on the screen here. And that's why I intend to replace the screen in it at some point. Sooner rather than later. Let me do a quick game of mini golf. I suppose. Three D Ultra Mini Golf from Sierra. Very, very good game. New game. We'll just do one hole.
I don't know if you're able to hear that, but that was um, an impersonation of Ed Sullivan. You just heard, um, the, I think the MIDI volume is louder than the wave volume on this computer, so that's why you weren't able to really hear it. And he's talking again, but you can't really hear it again. Sorry about that. This game came out in 1997, I believe. I think I got a little bit later than that. Yeah, you can hear that hard drive start to stutter. I think it's on its last legs. There we go. Yeah, that's the um, Compaq Armada E500. Very good machine, and I look forward to being able to do more with it um, over time as I um, refurbish it. I believe that sound came from the, um, the Simpsons. I'm starting to lose count of computers already. Um, I believe this was number five. Anyway, on to the next. Okay, on to computer number six. Um, now, this one I, it might be a little bit debatable on how vintage it could be considered, but um, this is um, one of my most prized possessions, actually. <laughs> the Dell Dimension 2350, um, a computer I bought new in June of 2003, when I was only 13 years old. And um, I wound up falling in love with this machine when I got it, and um, it was my main um, daily driver from 2003 up until 2008 and it never failed me at all. It was always reliable, always um, ready to go and um, I could rely on it for just about anything. Um, and the reason I loved it so much was because um, the two computers I had prior to this, um, the Never Obsolete E-Machine and the 2001 um, Pentium 3 Gateway, were both piles of garbage. <laughs> and I hated both of them. And so to get a system that was fast and reliable, I was automatically hooked on this. I loved it. has a 2.2 GHz um, Intel Pentium 4 Northwood. Originally came with 256 megs of memory, but in 2007 I upgraded it to a gig, which it still has. A 60 gigabyte hard drive, um, which it still has. A, um, it originally had a CD-ROM drive up here, but I had to replace it a few years ago when it died. And um, and this was a, my first computer to ever have a DVD burner on it. It was um, a DVD Plus R and Plus RW only burning drive. Um, minus R's and minus RW's it could not do. And I recently replaced that drive uh, just a couple of months ago actually um, with this um, newer LG drive because the original DVD RW drive um, quit working. So um, I replaced it with this one and this one burns um, both plus and minus which is very very nice. And um, there's a lot of people um, have different opinions about these um, Pentium 4 Dells from the early to mid 2000s. And some people like them, some people hate them. Um, I personally really like them, um, mainly because um, I used them so much um, as a teenager. Because my dad had a Pentium 4 Dell laptop that he used as his daily driver back then. And I had this um, as my daily driver back in the day. And um, it was very, very, very reliable for me. And in fact, it was this computer I was using when I first got into um, 90s nostalgia back in 2005. So yeah, um, there's a lot of history in this computer. Originally came with um, Windows XP Home Edition because it was 2003. <laughs> Look at all the scuff marks though on the side. <laughs> this computer has seen it all. It has seen it all. And um, 
I gotta admit though, I'm actually not using this computer um, currently. Um, it's been sitting there under the workbench, um, but I do plan on using it for something someday. Um, I just don't know what, and I refuse to get rid of this computer. Um, this is the kind of computer I want to save and um, show my children someday, show them what I used as a teenager. So, um, without further ado, let's um, power it on. And by the way, this is the original monitor it came with. This was my first LCD display. So, here we go. Hear that Western Digital hard drive winding up. Recently, I did check the health of the drive, and despite all the years of wear and tear, it still has good health. Hmm, no display. I bet I, I plugged the drive. I, I plugged the monitor into the wrong VGA port. You see, back in 2014, I. Um, upgraded the video card for the first time in its life. All its life it had been using the horrible Intel onboard graphics, but then I gave it a, um, a NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 video card, which was a million times better. Now, the thing about these um, Dimension 2350s is that um, they don't have an AGP slot, so if you want to upgrade the video card, you have to use a PCI video card. Which is not good as, as good as AGP, but it's still a great upgrade. Now, I don't know what I have installed on this um, computer at the moment as far as operating systems. Hmm, apparently it's Windows 98. Believe it or not, um, this computer can run Windows 98 just fine. Did not discover that feature until um, about five years ago, maybe. Sound card's also been upgraded um, from the um, onboard um, SoundMax audio to um, a Sound Blaster um, live value. I did that a couple of years ago, I believe. But yeah, this computer was definitely designed for Windows XP, but again, runs 98 just fine and runs 2000 just fine. Okay, clock looks correct. Like I said, this is the first time I've booted this computer up in a while. No sound, but that's because I don't have any speakers hooked up at the moment. Hmm, apparently I got a full install on here. I went all out. <laughs> don't know what I installed this for. Yeah, this is way overkill for Windows 98, but hey, it works. Okay, um, there's really not much to see here that you haven't already seen, so we'll go ahead and shut down. So there you go, um, the Dell Dimension 2350, um, one of my uh, most prized computers of my past, and that was computer number six. Okay, we're in my bedroom now, um, where the rest of my vintage computers are, and here is um, number seven, the Dell Latitude C600 laptop computer. This has been a favorite of mine because, well, um, I'll go ahead and tell you, um, this is the best portable vintage gaming computer I've ever owned because it plays everything from the early 90s to the early 2000s, and most importantly, here, you can still buy batteries for these things. 
brand new batteries. Now they're Chinese batteries, but they still, but you can still get new batteries for these, which means that you can take these laptops, put Windows 98 on them, and you can play all your DOS games, all your Windows games from the 90s um, with no problem. Well, most of the time. A few incompatibilities here and there, but um, if you're looking for a good vintage laptop to um, play everything on, get a Dell Latitude C600. And they're pretty cheap, too, if you um, look hard enough. So, um, open the screen there. It's got a um, Intel Pentium 3. I don't recall the um, clock speed. I think it's like 7 or 800 megahertz. Um, I've got a 16 gigabyte compact flash card in there in place of the hard drive. And it's got... Um, I think 256 megs of memory. And it's running um, Windows 98 Second Edition. So, um, go ahead and fire it up. Notice we're running it off the battery. Alright. Sure, I've been seeing a lot of Windows 98 in this video, haven't we? But it's a good operating system. It's very, very, very quiet without a hard drive in it. It takes a little while for it to boot up. It's, um, it also um, has a uh, multi-purpose bay down here. Um, I currently have a second battery in mine, but you can put an um, optical drive in it or a floppy drive in it, which I have both. Optical drive is a DVD-ROM drive, and it plays DVDs just fine on here, so it makes a good little portable DVD player. Okay, again, we're not connected to the network right now. Zoom in on the screen. Screen does need to be replaced. It um, glitches out every now and then, which will probably happen in this video at some point. Okay, I think we're all booted up now. System properties, Windows 98. Got a um, ATI Mobility video card in here. Good card, by the way. I think it's like 8 megs of video memory. And ESS Maestro Audio. Doesn't sound the best, but what's important is it works just fine in DOS. And um, as I mentioned before, what makes this laptop so good is because um, you can play so many games on it and take them on the go with you, such as um, mm, Putt-Putt and Fatty Bear's Activity Pack. I have a program that automatically changes the screen resolution and um, color depth on um, icons called QRes. Alright, enough of that. And when you close out of it, QRES puts everything um, back the way it was, which is very, very convenient. Got your uh, SimCity 2000.
Wow, this is um, Charleston, South Carolina. That's pretty cool. It must be during Hurricane Hugo. Must be Mount Pleasant right there. Highway 17, I-26. Well, from what I understand, Hurricane Hugo was quite bad down there. I have been to Charleston um, only once, though, and that was in 2001. That was a long time ago. And, um, as I mentioned before, DOS gaming, um, very much possible. Don't have shortcuts to them at the moment on here for some reason. Oh. Got Jill the Jungle here. That's probably not the best example because it sounds like the audio is messing up. Dog's barking, sorry about that. Must have heard of something outside. He barks at everything. Again, MIDI doesn't sound perfect, but it sounds good enough. And if you're just interested in this for mobility, it's no big deal. And plus, I've got so many other desktop computers that can play this stuff perfectly anyway. This is just if I'm on the road, in bed, power's out, good to go. this and we'll go ahead and shut it down and move on to the next one Um, vintage computer number eight is up here on this shelf, but um, it's currently out of commission for the moment. This is the um, Toshiba Satellite 2505 CDS um, that we purchased brand new in um, 1999. And um, it has a 233 MHz um, Intel MMX. Um, originally had a 2 gig hard drive, um, 32 megs of RAM, and Windows 98. Um, and Unfortunately, a passive matrix display, but you learn to live with that. <laughs> Currently out of commission because the uh, power jack um, needs to be resoldered, and I need to send it off to for that to be done because I can't solder. But anyway, on to our last vintage computer. All right, I um, saved the best one for last. Um, at least this is the best one in my opinion. This is none other than the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. This was our um, family's first computer. I've told this story so many times, you'll probably puke if I tell it to you again. But um, this is our first computer. Um, again, not the exact same one, but the same model number. Um, I was able to obtain this back in 2013 thanks to a good friend of mine, um, the same guy that sold me my Corner Packard Bell. And um, this is pretty much an exact replica of that of my um, childhood machine. Um, um, and I went as far as um, buying the original desk that it sat on back in the 90s and um, getting the um, original stand back for it for my dad. So yeah, um, I am very, very um, glad to um, have this um, very, very retro setup. And um, I've got the Packard Bell keyboard, Microsoft mouse, Packard Bell monitor, which has a Santa hat on it for the Christmas season. 
and a little um, toy Christmas tree that my aunt bought for me the day I was born and that tree was actually purchased at Carolina Circle Mall of all places so um, let me get the tripod set up and we'll power this computer on all right let's fire her up turn the monitor on turn the computer on This month actually marked um, this computer's 22nd anniversary. We got it new in um, December of 1995, December 5th, 1995 to be exact. And I published a video that day um, a couple of weeks ago um, with a more in-depth look at this machine and what I've done with it lately. And this, this, what you're about to see is kind of a more abridged version of that. Running Windows 95 um, on a CF card, actually. I well, forgot to tell you the specs. Um, 100 megahertz Pentium. S originally came with 16 megs of RAM. This has been upgraded to 32. Um, originally had a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, but it was but this was changed to a CF card. Um, I've got a 2 gig CF card for Windows 95, as you can see here, and that's the operating system I use probably 90% of the time and I've also got another 2 gig card that I run Windows 3.1 on All right, we're at the desktop now system properties Packard Bell, Pentium, 32 megs Got a Cirrus Logic 5434 um, onboard video card. Network card, um, a 3COM card that I added in there myself earlier this year. And the Packard Bell Sound Modem card. So, um, let's uh, fire up Packard Bell Navigator. We gotta do that. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Again, I've shown this so many times. If I show it again, you'll probably puke, and I'm showing it right now, so you're probably puking as you speak. Um, for that, I apologize. Um, I will not be providing... Um, cleaning materials though. Sorry. Alright, let's show off a game. And this is one of my favorites of all time, The Incredible Machine. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, do it with a CD so we can get the CD audio. I was actually playing this on my Gateway 2000 um, the other day. Very, very fun game. I fell in love with it when I first got it in 1996. Latter part of the year, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Been a long day. <laughs> Been a long video to make. It's almost over, don't worry. Phew! Sierra! You know, we could sure use a little light in here. In the in an older version of this, he says, "Welcome to the Incredible Machine 2." But in this version, they just cut out the two, and it just sounds awkward. <laughs> Can't put my name in. And we'll go into puzzle play. Knock the eight ball off the screen. All right, well. 
I'll uh, zoom into the screen there so you can see me knock the 8-ball off the screen. <laughs> Very fun game. Um, you have to build Rube Goldberg devices. Sure. Put both bowling balls into the large column box in the center. All right, we can do that. Highly recommend this game if you can find a copy. By the way, this is actually version sure. three. But to me, it was version one because it was the first one I ever played. <laughs> Get all of the basketballs into the piped area. Don't tell me what to do. All right, just gotta duplicate what's on that side there. You know, I'm going a little too fast. I'm getting ahead of myself. Love the music in this game, by the way. I loved it so much that as a child, I would um, take my portable tape recorder, hold it up to one of these speakers, and record the music to listen to in the car. <laughs> but it was 1997, I didn't have any better equipment at the time. Put the three bowling balls into the wicker baskets. All right. Now this is my favorite song, Hayseed. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Do one more. Put How about that? Bowling balls between the logs. There's Hayseed again. Take this disc out of the drive, and um, I'll show you a quick DOS game. How about that? Do I have a DOS game folder here? I do, I do, I do. All right. I'm going to try this one out for size. Or not. <laughs> Doesn't like my sound card. I think it would if I was actually in real DOS, but um, I don't feel like booting into that at the moment. Alright, we'll do Sky Roads one more time. <laughs> Again, I can't use the joystick in Windows for, DOS, for this particular DOS game because you can't calibrate it properly. song. I know I'm weird. But I'm sure you're weird in your own way as well. Whoever's watching this, oh, that'll work.
Alright, we'll try Road 3. But only because uh, my um, YouTube friend, ComputerKid1416, um, gave me a helpful tip that you're not supposed to go so fast. I do suspect you have to go fast right here. Right, we'll start slowing down here. Okay, I probably could have made it, but for some reason it wouldn't let me turn. And I hit the button at the wrong time. Why can't I turn when the when I hit the space bar? That's what I need to do. Uh, how do I? How can you get past this if you run out of fuel all the time? Again, this game was not made to be beaten, I don't think. <laughs> maybe someday, folks. Maybe not this Christmas. Maybe not the next. Maybe not the one after that. But maybe by um, the year 2042. So, um, we'll go ahead and shut this down. Again, love this computer. My favorite one in the whole wide world. This is where it all started. The Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. A legend of a machine. So here we are at the end of another nostalgic Christmas series. This year was actually the first year I actually managed to put out 25 videos each day without any gaps. I can't promise I'll be able to do the same next year though, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So before I conclude this video, um, you know, I feel I should reflect on a few things with you folks. Many times on this channel, um, Christmas or not, I get comments and messages, sadly sometimes on the hateful side, criticizing me for being overly nostalgic and that I should just move on. And I can understand why you would think that, but for me, nostalgia is not only a lot of fun and a worthwhile hobby for me, but since I started all this when I was 15 years old, it has been a wonderful coping mechanism and whenever I feel sad, I can always count on nostalgia to help me feel better. And if it's not your thing, that's perfectly okay. I'm not telling you how to live your life. But anyway, thank you to everyone for making all these nostalgic Christmas videos possible this year. If it wasn't for your viewership, I wouldn't have the motivation to make these videos every year. Now, before I go, I would like to make one note of something kind of exciting. On January 1st, this channel will undergo a major change. Now this is something I've been working on since September, and on January 1st, I will finally be ready to roll it out to you folks. As for the content of this channel, that is not going to change at all, so don't worry about that. So anyway, check out my channel on New Year's Day to see what the future of this channel will be. So anyway, I hope all of you have a very merry and blessed Christmas. God bless all of you folks. Seriously. So, this is Billy Core signing off.
Christmas, you filthy animal. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The addresses are located at the bottom. Until next time, this is Billy Core wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.